Pal has been a largely progressive king, but his playboy past would come back to haunt him. Welcome to Miss Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 scandals that rocked royal families. It wasn't talked about. I'm utterly fascinated by what's coming to light now. For this list, we'll be looking at the most noteworthy controversies that have shaken royal families all around the world. Which of these regal clans do you think is the most insufferable? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. Princess Diana's Panorama Interview Do you think Mrs Parker Bowles was a factor in the breakdown of your marriage? Well, there were three of us in this marriage, so it was a bit crowded. <laughs> The tumultuous marriage between Princess Diana and then Prince Charles more or less came to an end in 1992, when the two formally announced their separation. Seemingly of the opinion that senior members of the royal family were conspiring to get rid of her, Diana granted an interview to BBC journalist Martin Bashir in November of 1995. I'd like to be a queen of people's hearts in people's hearts, but I don't see myself being queen of this country. I don't think many people would want me to be queen. Actually, when I say many people, I mean the establishment that I'm married into. In the 54-minute special, the Princess of Wales revealed explosive details about her marriage, including her own affair and Charles's relationship with Camilla Parker Bowles. She also spoke candidly about her struggles with an eating disorder and postnatal depression. The spellbinding program was watched by around 200 million people worldwide and was reportedly so damaging it severed Diana's residual ties with Buckingham Palace. And so you feel that by speaking out in this way you'll be able to reassure the people? Mm -hmm. The people that matter to me, the man on the street. Yeah, because that was matter. that's what matters more than anything else. Number 19. King Henry VIII Creates the Church of England Years into his marriage to Catherine of Aragon, King Henry VIII was still without a male heir to his throne. Tired of waiting for a miracle, Henry sought to annul his marriage with Catherine and take Anne Boleyn, one of her ladies-in-waiting, as his new wife. You want me to retire and give up my daughter's claim as sole rightful heir to the throne? Well, I shall not. Not in a thousand years. Catherine was not a fan of the idea, and the Pope, who had dominion over then Catholic England, declined Henry's request for a divorce. This incensed the king, leading him to officially renounce papal authority, establish the Anglican Church of England, and install himself as its head. The presumption of the Pope, thinking he could tell you, you, what to do. Now free to do his will, Henry divorced Catherine and married Boleyn in 1533. The marriage also did not last long, as the king had Boleyn executed only three years later. Thus I take my leave of the world, and of you. Bless you. And I heartily desire you all to pray for me. Number 18, Captain Mark Phillips' Love Child. Together, they face this great isle in the congregation, and all eyes are upon this couple. Captain Mark Phillips got married to Princess Anne in a beautiful ceremony on November 14th, 1973. But sadly, just like her older brother Charles, Anne's marriage eventually hit the rocks, and the Princess Royal separated from Phillips in 1989. There have been rumours recently about divorce and unhappiness. Are they true or untrue? <laughs> <laughs> Three years later, Phillips was taken to court by Heather Tonkin, an art teacher from New Zealand who claimed that he was the father to her then five-year-old daughter, Felicity. A DNA test was carried out, which confirmed that Phillips was indeed the young girl's dad. Phillips and Tonkin allegedly had a one-night stand after meeting in New Zealand while he was still married to Anne. The ensuing scandal possibly contributed to the Princess Royal filing for divorce in April 1992. Well, I, I feel I'm sort of dying to get an opportunity to, to say something, to, to, to knock it all over. Number 17, Prince Albert II's illegitimate children. There was that famous quote that Monaco is a mm -hmm. sunny place for shady people. Mm -hmm. 
Was that fair? Since his ascension to the throne of Monaco in 2005, Prince Albert II has made headlines on multiple occasions following claims that he had fathered children out of wedlock. Mere days before his coronation, the prince announced that he had fathered a son with a former flight attendant from Togo. Less than a year later, Albert found himself in the news again when a DNA test confirmed that he had a daughter back in the 90s with an American woman. Prince Albert shares Jasmine with Tamara Rotolo and Alexandra with Nicole Cost. And because he wasn't married to either of them, the two aren't in line for succession to the throne. In 2011, he got married to Olympic swimmer Charlene Whitstock, amid rumors of yet another illegitimate child, which the prince denied. The couple has since welcomed a set of twins. The update comes after the twins and Prince Albert reunited with Princess Charlene in South Africa in late August after months apart. Number 16, the Duke of Kent, Prince George's wild lifestyle. Now watch the Prince of Wales. There, I wonder what he's telling his brother. A highly decorated pilot and military officer, Prince George was the uncle of Queen Elizabeth II. But when he wasn't flying planes for the Royal Air Force, George was leading a pretty scandalous life. Although married to his second cousin, Princess Marina of Greece and Denmark, the Duke reportedly had extramarital affairs with both men and women. As quickly to be denied. But even if it isn't true, then we're all thrilled to even the suggestion of a royal romance. He was also rumored to have substance use disorder, which was notoriously linked to his relationship with socialite Kiki Preston, a socialite known as the girl with the silver syringe. Once George returned to the UK with Kiki, Prince Edward was aghast to discover his little brother's new habit and did what any good brother with a lot of money and influence would do, effectively banned Kiki from the country and locked George up in a palace to go fully cold turkey. Prince George's roller coaster life came to a sad end on August 25th, 1942, when he was killed in a plane crash aboard a military aircraft bound for Iceland. Number 15, King Albert II's love child. Back in 1999, an 18-year-old journalist named Mario de Niels released an unauthorized biography of the Belgian queen, Paula. In the book, de Niels suggested the existence of an illegitimate daughter born to Paula's husband, King Albert II. Oh, a lot of Belgians were at Paul's. Yeah, a lot of Belgians thought it was an, an attack on the monarchy. This statement made headlines around the world and resulted in an investigation that revealed the identity of the love child to be Delphine Boel. After Albert abdicated the throne in 2013, Boel filed a paternity lawsuit against him, but the case dragged on for years. When he literally dumped her and, you know, pretended she didn't exist anymore, <laughs> she just stood up for herself and said, this is not right, this is not okay, you know? And she took on a king and she fought for her rights. It was finally resolved in 2020 when Albert was compelled to produce a DNA sample, which confirmed him as her father. Boel became legally recognized as a member of the Belgian royal family and was granted the title of princess. Delphine Bowl will henceforth be known as Her Royal Highness Delphine de Saxe-Coburg. Her children will be treated as Belgian princes and princesses. Number 14, Prince Ernest August of Hanover caught cheating. After divorcing her first husband and losing her second to a speedboating accident, Princess Caroline of Monaco got married for the third time to Prince Ernest August of Hanover in 1999. A match much more in keeping with her royal position than either of her previous marriages, especially in view of her status as presumptive heir to the throne. Their royal matrimony was plagued by Ernest August's very public controversies, including a diplomatic mishap at Expo 2000 and an assault conviction in 2004. By 2009, the couple had announced their separation, with Caroline moving back to Monaco. A few months later, the prince was photographed on a beach in Thailand getting extra cosy with another woman. The pictures received a four-page spread in a French magazine and seemed to worsen Ernst August's relationship with Caroline, who was set to testify as an eyewitness in his assault appeal. Her charity work now takes priority over her social life. Number 13, King Wajiralongkorn imprisons his mistress. 
In 2019, while married to Queen Sutida, King Wajiralongkorn of Thailand officially recognized his longtime mistress, Saininat Wong Wachira Pakti, as a royal noble consort. Thai kings over the centuries have maintained a harem, enjoying the company of thousands of concubines. But Saninath was the first to get the title of royal consort in nearly a century. This position put her in a polygamous relationship with the king and queen. However, it didn't take long for the arrangement to turn sour. But in October, Saninath was stripped of her titles over disloyalty and for plotting against the queen, along with six other palace officials who allegedly committed quote-unquote evil actions. She was then rumoured to have been thrown in prison. Less than a year later, she was released from custody by the king, with all her titles, ranks and honours duly restored. Thailand's monarch has called her back to Germany to rejoin his harem with respect. Yet it didn't take long for another controversy to emerge. In December of 2020, hundreds of explicit images of Wong Wajira Pak Di were stolen and leaked in an apparent bid to ruin her reputation. Number 12, Infanta Cristina of Spain's corruption scandal. I didn't pay for these trips. It was my husband who took care of it. I don't know how. As I said at the beginning, we divided household responsibilities and my husband handled the family expenses. A sister to Spanish King Philippe VI, Princess Christina was at the centre of controversy in 2014 when she was charged with tax fraud and money laundering. According to reports, the princess and her husband, Iñaki Undarangarin, had allegedly embezzled millions of dollars in public donations to the NOS Institute, an NGO they both ran. My husband and I never talked about these topics, so he never told me how it was managed. He never told me about the revenue and expenditure of Aizun. In light of the criminal charges, King Philippe stripped Christina and her family of their royal titles and barred them from attending any royal events, including his own coronation. Following a publicised trial, the princess was acquitted of the fraud charges while her husband was found guilty and handed a six-year prison sentence, which was eventually reduced slightly. Despite her acquittal, she has to pay a €265,000 fine as she has a civil responsibility for benefiting from the crime, even if she was unaware of the misdemeanour. Number 11. Sarah Ferguson's Cash for Access Controversy Watch Sarah Ferguson's hand. The gesture says, give me the money. Fondly referred to as Fergie, the Duchess of York was married to Prince Andrew from 1986 until their divorce ten years later. The couple first separated in 1992, the same year in which Ferguson was photographed sunbathing topless while frolicking with another man. Sucking Sarah's toes, mummy. What? I know. People tell me I put my foot in it from time to time. At least I didn't put it in someone's mouth. After getting a divorce from Andrew in 1996, the Duchess soon fell out of grace with the royal family, and her finances struggled. This all led to the May 2010 incident, in which Ferguson was secretly recorded collecting a bribe from an undercover journalist in exchange for unfettered access to her ex-husband. £500,000 pounds when you can to me. Open doors. The scandal further worsened Ferguson's relationship with Buckingham Palace and damaged her public image, which she has now focused on rebuilding. It's very hard for me because I long to be uh, with the girls in their finery and looking lovely and I long to be part of it all, um, to be with the girls. But uh, you cannot have your cake and eat it. Number 10, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle step down. In his young adult years, Prince Harry found himself in hot water multiple times, particularly for his wild partying habits. He was seen wearing a Nazi costume in 2005, and in 2012 he was photographed naked in Las Vegas. But all of that seemed to have been forgotten when he wedded former Hollywood actress Meghan Markle in 2018. Their marriage was soon plagued by seemingly racist prejudices against Markle by the British tabloid press. This contributed to the couple's announcement in January 2020 that they will be stepping back from official royal duties. 
we really wanted to remove the supposed public interest argument that the press had over every element of our lives. After moving to California later that year, Harry and Meghan generated further controversy with their highly publicised Oprah Winfrey interview and the release of the Prince's 2023 memoir, Spare. I'm sorry that me owning my story and being able to tell my own story is upsetting to some people but I have to rely on the truth. Number 9. Edward VIII's Abdication In the history of the Great British Monarchy, only once has a sovereign willingly stepped down from the throne, and that was King Edward VIII. That I have found it impossible to carry the heavy burden of responsibility and to discharge my duties as king as I would wish to do, without the help and support of the woman I love. Born in 1894, Edward VIII became the ruling monarch following the death of his father, George V, in 1936. Just a few months later, the new king decided to settle down with American divorcee Wallace Simpson. This was a highly contentious move at the time, as the Church of England forbade divorced people from remarrying unless their ex-spouse was deceased. Unthinkable. Can he do it? Absolutely not. It is going to anyway. All hell's broken loose. Facing overwhelming opposition from the church and the British government, Edward chose to abdicate the throne to be with the woman he loved. The two got married in June 1937 and remained together until his death in 1972. I think happiness is a great secret to how you feel and look, perhaps. We've been very happy. I'm sure I have. Number 8. King Carl XVI Gustav's Wild Lifestyle Exposed Meet King Carl XVI and Queen Sylvia. Carl has been a largely progressive king, but his playboy past would come back to haunt him. Once a widely beloved 21st century monarch, King Carl XVI Gustav of Sweden had his entire reputation turned on its head with the release of a controversial book in 2010. Titled The Reluctant Monarch, the book claimed that the king frequented underground strip clubs and was involved in an extramarital affair with a Swedish celebrity. To top it all off, the authors also alleged that a secret police force called Sapo had worked to keep these activities under wraps. Carl later addressed the allegations at an outdoor press conference saying, I have spoken with my family and the Queen and we choose to turn the page and move forward because as I understand, these are things that happened a long time ago. The book's release was met with a strongly negative reaction from the Swedish populace, most of whom directed their vitriol at its writers. As a result, one of the co-authors was reportedly fired from her job in public media. And it's clear that the king has a special place in people's hearts. Number 7. Nepalese Royal Killings He was a gentleman and a modernist. A man who wanted to make the monarchy and the palace more progressive. A man who was always smiling. How could he have turned suddenly into a trigger-happy monster? On the 1st of June 2001, members of the Nepalese royal clan gathered at the Narayan Hiti Palace for a family event. What started out as a night of celebration turned into a national tragedy when Crown Prince Dipendra reportedly killed several of his relatives, including his parents, King Birendra and Queen Aishwarya. Dipendra then turned the gun on himself, eventually slipping into a coma and dying three days later. This shook the entire nation of Nepal, with many still in doubt over the prince's involvement in the murders. Within hours of taking over, the new king described the massacre as an accident, an explanation no one was willing to buy. To the people, the attempt later to swing the needle of suspicion on Prince Dipendra smelt inevitably of a cover-up. To date, the motive is still unclear, although a popular theory suggests a family dispute over his choice of bride. Dependra's uncle, Gyanendra, ascended the throne, ruling until the monarchy was abolished in 2008. Privileges are gone, the tax-free status has gone, and so too the army. Even the national anthem praising the king has gone. Number 6. Princess Margaret and Peter Townsend's Forbidden Romance Not on our romantic trip to Rhodesia. Official duty in Rhodesia. <laughs> With the man I love. 
secretly love. I will be the happiest. The short-lived romance between Princess Margaret and Captain Peter Townsend captured the public's attention in the 1950s. The two first met when Margaret was still a teenager, and Townsend was a equerry for her father, King George VI. They developed a romantic relationship later on, which was confirmed in the public by a subtle interaction at Queen Elizabeth II's coronation. Picking fluff off a man's jacket, that's a gesture as intimate as a kiss. More intimate since it suggests the kiss has already happened. Although the public loved them together, Townsend was however a divorcee, forbidden by the Church of England from remarrying. Thus, the Princess Royal was left with two options, either marry Townsend and forfeit her right to succession, or call off her engagement to the man she loved. Ultimately, she chose the latter. We have resolved to make the ultimate sacrifice and break off our relationship with immediate effect. Number 5. Prince Geoffrey's Extravagant Criminal Lifestyle The younger brother of the Sultan of Brunei, Prince Geoffrey, is well known for his extravagant lifestyle, which has put him in trouble on multiple occasions. Their wild parties are the stuff of legend, free-flowing booze, while hundreds of women are flown in from all over the world to cater to their every whim. Jeffrey first made international headlines in 1997, after he was sued by Shannon Marketic, a former Miss USA, who alleged that he and the Sultan forced her to perform acts against her will and assaulted her. The case was eventually dismissed on the grounds of diplomatic immunity. In 2000, Jeffrey was charged by his brother with embezzlement of billions of dollars from his time as the country's finance minister. Although he denied the crime, he eventually signed an agreement to turn over his assets, including over 500 properties, 2,000 cars, 100 paintings, 5 boats and 9 aircraft. The Sultan's brother, Prince Jeffrey, has recently been welcomed back to the country with open arms and has not lost either of his hands over his $14 billion theft. Number 4. Edward VIII's Ties to the Nazis After his abdication from the throne in 1936, Edward VIII was conferred the title Duke of Windsor, eventually moving to Paris with his new wife. He's not just going to retreat into being a playboy on the Riviera. No. He is a big figure and he wants to be recognised as a big figure. The next year, the couple went on a highly publicised tour of Nazi Germany, during which they met with Adolf Hitler. Edward was even photographed giving the Nazi salute. Twisted ideology of Nazism that appealed to him. His arm went up like that, you know, vague sort of salute. The controversial pictures and the Duke's relationship with the Führer were largely suppressed by the British government and only emerged in the public space decades later. After World War II broke out in 1939, Edward became the subject of a foiled plot by the Germans, who planned to kidnap and reinstate him as sovereign, following their intended conquest of the UK. There is no possibility of my forgiving you. The question is, how on earth can you forgive yourself? Number three, Camilla Gate. I suppose one has to be aware of it in the room. Just feel one's way along with it, if you, if you know what I mean. Mm. You're awfully good at feeling your way along. Stop it. Today, they're the king and queen consort of the United Kingdom, but back in the 90s, the relationship between Charles III and Camilla Parker Bowles was highly scrutinised. While still married to their respective partners, their illicit affair became public knowledge after an intimate call between the two was secretly recorded and leaked to the British tabloid press. In the transcripts, which were widely published in both national and international newspapers, Charles joked about wanting to become Camilla's tampon. Perhaps you could just come back as a box. <laughs> what sort of box? A box of Tampax. <laughs> <laughs> you could just keep going. Referred to by Princess Diana as sick, the graphic conversation became a source of embarrassment for the royal family and called into question Charles's fitness to lead. Eventually, after divorcing their spouses, the couple got married in 2005. By thy blessing, let these rings be to Charles and Camilla, a symbol of unending love and faithfulness and of the promises they have made to each other. Number 2. Juan Carlos I's Multiple Scandals Throughout his rule, Juan Carlos I was rumoured to have had multiple affairs while married to Queen Sophia. 
However, the Spanish king was widely beloved, and his reputation remained largely untarnished until 2012. Here's the International Business Times with the king's statement. I am sorry, very sorry, I made a mistake. It won't happen again. That year, while Spain was in a recession, the king went on a lavish hunting trip to Botswana, during which he sustained a serious hip injury. Even worse, he travelled with Corinne Suzanne Wittgenstein-Sein, a Danish businesswoman who was rumoured to be his mistress. The resulting backlash was so severe, it played a part in Carlos' decision to abdicate the throne just two years later. The Prime Minister Mariano Rajoy, who worked closely with the 86-year-old after he decided to make way for his son Felipe, endorsed the law with his signature. In 2020, the former king went on a self-imposed exile to Abu Dhabi. After corruption, investigations were opened into his involvement in a Saudi rail deal. For now, the palace is saying nothing over Juan Carlos's whereabouts, despite fierce speculation in local media. The king emeritus, though, did say in his letter he'd cooperate with judicial authorities in the investigation. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Prince Andrew's felonious friendship Perhaps the most catastrophic scandal for the British monarchy in recent history came with the revelation of the ties between Prince Andrew and disgraced billionaire Jeffrey Epstein. Never happened. Epstein's housekeeper, also in a Florida court legal deposition, said that you visited the Palm Beach residence around four times a year. You got a daily massage. Four times a year? In 2011, the Duke of York was forced to quit his role as Britain's trade envoy once his friendship with Epstein came to light. Andrew was also alleged to have had intimate relationships with minors, notably Virginia Dufre, who later filed a lawsuit against the prince. It was disgusting. Um, he wasn't mean or anything, but he got up and he said thanks and walked out and I sat there in bed just horrified. In the wake of Epstein's death in 2019, Andrew sat for a disastrous interview with Emily Maitlis, in which he addressed the allegations. The Duke eventually resigned from all public duties and was more or less banished from Buckingham Palace by his brother, King Charles III. I think, you know, the royal family well, they've cut Andrew off from public duties. They've airbrushed him out of royal life. But I think a lot of people are saying, well, you know, that's not enough. He needs to answer those allegations. 